The Kimberly Magic Academy isn't like any other magic academy that you can think of. Although you can say that the school is so strong, about 80% of the students graduate yearly because the others have been consumed. It's the beginning of a new academy year, and several students in hopes of becoming magicians register for the academy, and they are set to result. The excitement of being a new student doesn't leave them. While some of them are glad, an entire team of six students who are the main characters of the anime have practically no idea about what they are going to meet in this new school, but they are optimistic regardless. One of them, Oliver Horn, is the first to pass through the walkway to enter the school. On his way, a flower starts speaking to him. He calls the flower madam as madam tells him he looks very anxious. He asks madam if she can recognize how he looks and if he indeed looks anxious. She tells him that he should at least be cheerful about his new resumption even though he doesn't know about the terrible future that awaits him. He smiles and tells her he will heed her advice. As he walks away, he wonders if that is the same way the flower sows fears into the heart of every student resuming school. He thinks about her words about the terrible future, and he admits that she may be right because he really doesn't know the kind of future that awaits him in that school. He stops walking when he sees a female student Katie standing in front of him in a fearful manner. Katie has also heard the words of Madam, and she is very afraid because of the way the flower has spoken to her. She thinks about the terrible future the flower means and hopes that it would be a joke and not a reality. Another male student Guy Greenwood who sees Katie realizes that she is very scared and afraid. He meets her to console her and tells her that she doesn't have to worry about what the flower says. He tells her they are magiflora, and it is rumored that they feed on the magic particles that are around, and it makes them behave weirdly. He tells her that those kinds of flowers around that side are more weird than she can imagine. She tells him that she likes fauna too, and she is glad she can see fauna around the school. They try to get to know each other better, and when he asks her what kind of fauna she likes, she says she likes anyone, the big, the small and even the slim. Their sweet conversation is interrupted when another female student Michella screams at another male student Pete because Pete is about to step on Madam. Pete asks him if he knows what Madam will do to him if he steps on her, and Madam also calls him a rude student. Pete picks his bag from the floor, adjusts his glasses and says it isn't like he has asked Michella for help in the first place. Just as he is about to continue his journey, another student enters. She looks so different from the others, and she isn't even putting on the normal clothes they could have inferred that other students would put on. She looks like a samurai, and the other students wonders who she is. With her prideful attitude flying behind her, the young lady, Nanao Hibia, walks beside all the students and goes her own way. Just like Madam's normal way of scaring the student, she attempts to scare Nanao in the same manner and tells her that she has a different attire, but Nanao doesn't even give her the attention she seeks, and she walks away. Oliver is so attracted to her, he doesn't know if it is because of the way she has dressed and how it is different from the way other students have dressed or because of her presumed strength and look. All he knows is that it looks like it is a predomination. It is just like fate. After the fated meeting of these six students, they all join their other students to watch the first parade of the school. The parade starts with the passing of Fauna. When Guy sees the Fauna, he recalls that Katie had earlier told him that she loves Fauna, and she enjoys seeing them. He looks at her, wondering if she will be excited, but he sees she looks more disturbed than excited. He asks her if she is no longer in love with Fauna as she claimed, but she tells him that Fauna isn't the problem. Instead, she has a problem with the fact that the school is making a troll parade in front of them. In that same parade, they have seen Flora's, Fauna, a dragon and a troll. Katie tells Guy that it isn't good as they have captured a troll to parade. She claims a troll is just a species like humans, and if it is not the case that humans invaded their circle, there is no reason trolls will find their ways to the midst of humans. Guy doesn't have the same opinion. He tells her that trolls aren't even innocent as she makes them seem to be. He reminds her that it is these same trolls that destroy human farms and even kill humans. In his opinion, trolls are just like any other monsters who have been captured and can be used in any way. This triggers Katie the more, she refuses to accept what Guy is saying, and his words make her more angry that they turn the conversation into an argument. Pete, who is standing in front of them reading his book, gets angry that they are using their arguments to disturb him. He warns them to stop, and Oliver tells them that they can resolve their individual differences later. They can talk better when they eventually know each other's names because, at this point, they are still strangers. Katie realizes that Oliver is right. As she is about to introduce herself, someone releases a spell on her and starts controlling her legs to make her run towards the troll. At first, Oliver and Guy assume she is doing it purposely and try to call her to stop, but she screams that her legs are running on their own. 
they figure that she is under a spell, and they know that if she runs towards the troll, she will die. Michella McFarlane also notices what is happening, and she goes to meet Pete Raston, and they all run to stop Katie from getting to the troll. The troll has run out of control. It kills two animals, and as Katie is about to get to it, the person removes the spell on her leg, and she falls. The troll walks towards her to step on her. The other students wonder how they can stop the troll, but Nana screams halt, and the troll stops. Nana goes to the front of the troll and asks Katie if she can walk. She tells Nana that she can't work, and Nana says that she will help Katie when she is done dealing with the troll. The other four students wonder how it is possible for Nana to single-handedly defeat the troll. Michella, seeing that Nano could be in danger, decides it is better for them to call the attention of the troll to themselves to save Nano and Katie. She tries to use her magic, but the troll isn't even bothered by her. Oliver tells them the best they can do is to distract the troll. He asks them if they can all use wind magic, and when they say yes, he asks them to throw their wind magic towards a direction. Then he creates a fake dragon cry to distract the troll. His distraction works, and when the troll gets distracted, Nana brings out her sword, and she jumps as high as possible to strike the troll. As she jumps, her hair changes color to an innocent color. Oliver wonders which kind of person she is, and to their shock, Nana defeats the troll. She comes down and appreciates the students who have has helped her. She tells them she couldn't have distracted the troll if they hadn't interfered, and she feels numbness in her hand. She tells Katie that she will help her up once she recovers. As a result of their acts that morning, they get separated from the other students. They are kept in a room where Oliver asks Nano if she has a plan when she stands before the troll. Nano says no, and she doesn't even have a katana. He asks her what she could have done if they didn't say her and says she could have died, and she says that it means she was saved from dying on her first day in school, which is a lucky sign. Oliver finds it difficult to understand which kind of person she is, but he knows that the innocent color that she changed to while fighting shows that she has a good tendency for magic. Their headmistress, Esmeralda, arrives. She apologizes for what happened earlier and says the troll had been captured and the injured students have been taken for treatment. She tells them that in that school, what they care about is freedom and result. She reminds them that their life and death are in their hands and they can either die or live. She assumes that they may think she is joking, but she claims she is serious. She says that out of 100% of them that have resumed into school that day, only 80% of them will graduate alive. Some would be consumed by monsters, some would be dragged by the monsters they summon, and with one circumstance or the other, about 20% of them will die regardless, and the ones that die will be said to be consumed by magic. She claims she doesn't feel bad about that because that is how they have raised the standards of their school to that day. She reminds them of their role and asks if they have a question. Nana tells her that if she feels headaches, she should rub the sides of her head. Esmeralda asks her if that is the question she has, and Nana says it isn't really a question but an advice because Esmeralda looks like she needs help. Esmeralda says that in the absence of any questions, they should all go for their bouquet. She says that they are free to interact with each other and sit down. They wonder where they will sit since there is no seat there, and she hits magic that carries them to the bouquet. In the dining room, the old students join them and try to welcome them to the school. They tell them that although the headmistress may be harsh, but everything she has said is true, but the senior students are trying to make the school safer for the newcomers. As it's time to eat, the students reconvene again. But this time, Katie isn't with them because she has been taken for treatment. She joins them, and they introduce themselves. Michella McFarlane tells them she is the eldest daughter of the McFarlane family, and Guy also recognizes her with their family signature family hair. Katie Alto introduces herself and says she is a transfer student from Farmland. Guy Greenhood tells them he is from many magical farmers and loves plants. Pete Raston claims there is no need to introduce himself because his family is commoner, and he isn't there to make friends with them. He concentrates on his book, and Olivia recognizes the book he is reading, so they talk a little. Nana Ihibia tells them she is from a samurai family at Yamatsukuni, and she came there after a man named McFarlane saved her from dying at war and asked her to come. She says the man has the same hair as Michella, and Michella says it is her father, who works as a part-time lecturer at the school. Oliver Horn introduces himself as a magician from a long line of magician family. He says he has sisters and brothers who have graduated from that same school, but he presently lives with a relative. They get to know each other, eat and go to their dorm. Coincidentally, Oliver and Pete are roommates. When Oliver wakes the next day, he goes to cover Pete's body so he won't catch a cold, as he remembers how Pete had warned him not to disturb him when he is reading. Oliver takes a walk where he meets a random lady. 
He asks her who she is, and she tells him his brother, Gwyn, has appointed her as Oliver's secret escort. Oliver asks for her name, and she introduces herself as Teresa. He hopes to see her face later in the future. As he walks around, he coincidentally sees Nanao bathing naked. He quickly uses magic to create a cover for her and asks her why she is doing that publicly. She says she isn't bathing but purifying herself from the blood of the day before. He asks about the scars he sees on her body, and she says it's from the war. When she finishes her bath, she claims she didn't come with anything to clean her body, so he gives her his coat. She appreciates him and tells him she is indebted to him. He also looks at her, wondering that despite how strange and innocent she looks, she has the scent of blood around her. The second episode of this anime begins the next morning at the Kimberly Academy, when Oliver and Pete meet with their other friends. Another student named Guy catches up to them in a rush, as he almost missed his classes for oversleeping. According to Guy, thanks to a clock in his room, he was able to wake up just in time. Dano takes pride in telling Guy that she doesn't need any alarm clocks to wake up and claims that she naturally rises around 6 in the morning. Guy notices that Nano is finally wearing the academy uniform, so she explains that the uniform arrived at her room the previous night. Because of the uniform, she finally feels like a proper mage, and everyone cheers her on for that. Except for Oliver, who loses himself in his thoughts, thinking about Nano's scars, which he saw in the previous episode. Guy snaps Oliver back from his thoughts, asking him why his robe looks damp, and Oliver tells him that he is just imagining things. Pete can no longer endure this baseless conversation and wants to find out what a magic class is like. He gets excited like a baby, so his friends start to treat him like one. Nano expresses that she cannot wait to learn magic, and they together head to their first ever sword arts class. The teacher, named Luther, welcomes all of the students to the class. Before heading to practical lessons, Luther first tells the students what sword arts actually are. Pete volunteers to answer what it is and begins to act like the teacher's pet. So, most of the students in the class begin to look down on him. Pete explains to Luther that sword arts are techniques performed using athames, just like the one he is holding in his hand. The use of these athames started 400 years ago, when a famous mage named Wilf Batterwell lost a duel to a muggle or a non-magical in close combat. Since then, mages have begun carrying athames to deal with attacks from close range and avoid being beaten when they can't chant an incantation. From then on, mages began fighting with swords as well as with wands, becoming the perfect warriors. Luther thanks Pete for his explanation and kicks off the first day of the class by having two people duel for the rest of the students. Luther asks for any volunteers who have prior experience fighting, and Nano immediately puts her hands up. One of the students who was looking down on Pete earlier, named Richard, volunteers to duel against Nano. Richard claims to have heard stories about Nana defeating a troll with just a sword, so he wants to see if she truly has what it takes. But he actually wants to show off his own skills and is looking down on Nana, knowing that she lacks in physical combat. Oliver also understands this, so before Nana gets humiliated by Richard in this duel, he tells Luther that he would also like to duel Nana. Oliver tells Richard to back off, claiming that he should be the one to be dueling her as he was the one who fought the troll alongside her. But Richard can't just let this opportunity go, so Michella challenges him to a duel instead to end this dilemma. Richard knows that Michella is stronger than him, but he still accepts the challenge as he wants to look good in front of the others. So, the teacher, Luther, announces to the students that the first duel will be between Oliver and Nano, and then the second duel will be between Richard and Michella. The first pair heads to the center of the classroom for their duel and bows at each other before drawing their swords. Luther casts an anti-lethality spell on both of their swords so that neither of them gets injured. He tells both of them that the rules are simple, and the duel will end if either of them gets inflicted with a mortal blow to the head or chest. Oliver decides to go easy on Nano, as he feels sympathetic towards her since she doesn't know how to use magic. But that is a mistake, as Nano changes her hair to grey and attacks Oliver with her full power. Oliver barely holds his own against her and tries to deflect her powerful slashes. They clash their swords at each other, and seeing how deadly her skills are, Oliver realizes that Nano definitely has blood on her hands. He loses his upper hand when, suddenly, Nano begins to get in tears as she begins to remember her past. Oliver doesn't want her to cry at all, so he unleashes his full potential to bring her back to the present. His and Nano's killing intent gets so strong that Luther gets forced to stop their duel and scolds both of them for breaking his anti-lethality spell. 
With the duel coming to an end, Michella asks Richard what he thinks of Nanao now. She knows Richard doesn't stand a chance against neither her nor Nanao, so she decides not to humiliate him and retracts her earlier challenge. Luther begins the lecture, but Oliver doesn't attend the class. So, Nanao catches up to him and tells Oliver that she regrets how their duel didn't come to a proper end. So she desires to fight him once again, but Oliver refuses, telling her that he never wants to fight someone like her again. He knows if they battle once again, they will end up killing each other, which he doesn't want as he has grown to have feelings for Nanao. So he walks away from her, leaving her in confusion. Later at the academy campus, Guy laments how gruesome today's lessons were. Guy tells everyone that at the Spellology class, the teacher, Francis, was against everything that Luther taught them and gave her reasoning that a mage only needs their wands. That is why Guy is surprised to see internal conflicts between the teachers at the same academy. So, he doesn't look forward to attending the next classes at all. Still, he has to, and he goes to attend the third class of the subject, Magical Biology. The teacher of this class, Vanessa, also reveals herself to be a nut job and begins her lecture by telling the students that, as a mage, they must treat all magical creatures as mere resources. According to her, their only task is to learn how to best exploit magical creatures. So, she gives them a task by summoning magical silkworms at every student's desk and telling them that they must exploit creatures like this one. For example, mages can make these silkworms grow as many cocoons as possible as long as they feed them with magic. She demonstrates how to do so and feeds so much magic to the silkworm that her cocoon turns black and it turns into a fierce monster. So, Vanisa tells the students to first learn to control their magic properly so that these silkworms don't turn into fierce monsters. She even gives them the test of making five perfect cocoons out of ten, and if any one fails, they will have to clean up their mess themselves. The test begins, and the students start feeding magic to their assigned silkworms. While some of them fail, Michella easily turns five silkworms into cocoons with one failure. Michella sees that Katie and Pete are having a hard time, so she asks Oliver to help them. She sees that Nano is also having troubles but doesn't tell Oliver to help her as she realizes they are not talking to each other for some reason. So instead of him, Michella decides to help Nano herself and ignores Guy who is also having troubles. With Oliver's help, Pete barely finishes with five perfect cocoons. But Katie remains slow and steady as she carefully turns all ten silkworms into perfect cocoons, as she doesn't want to kill any of them. She takes her time with it but fails to stop the final one from turning black as her mana begins to fluctuate. Still, Katie tries to save the silkworm, but it turns into a fierce monster and attacks her. Oliver and Michella come to her, but because of that, they end up getting penalized with negative points by Vanessa. Later at the infirmary, Katie treats the wound on her hand caused by the silkworm and apologizes to Oliver for causing him trouble. She explains to him that she doesn't support animal cruelty because her family had a bunch of animals, including demi-humans, and she grew fond of them. She is basically Newt Scamander of this anime and claims to have been extremely close with a troll named Patro and treated him as her friend even though anyone else would treat it as a threat. That's why, whenever Katie sees an animal or demihuman get hurt, she cannot take it. She knows that society needs to do these things to advance and maintain the cycle. She knows that to a mage, everything without human rights is just a resource to exploit. But even though she is a mage herself, she cannot accept that. She tells Oliver that she doesn't want to accept what is normal here at Kimberly Academy, like the troll incident or the previous class. Oliver understands Katie's feelings and gains newfound respect for her as a human. He realizes that Katie's childhood home must have been like growing up among angels in paradise since she lived with so many creatures. But Oliver believes that she has to adjust now as this is Earth, not her paradise, and tells her not to act like an angel as this cruel world holds no place for them. He tells Katie that if she still chooses to remain the kind person that she is, she can, as this is her life and it's perfectly fine to be more noble than angels. Katie gets surprised after hearing such kind words coming from Oliver right after spouting those heavy blows. But before she can thank Oliver, he again continues with his speech and tells her that cruelty is not everything in this world but just a small part. So, he encourages her to explore the world before making a decision about whether she wants to remain a noble person or a cruel, selfish being like most other mages. Oliver leaves the infirmary after telling Katie that she can face all of her difficulties together with her friends, revealing that the others were eavesdropping on them. Oliver then goes out to the campus and meets with Ms. Karst, who asks him if his first day at the academy was tough. Karst reveals that she has seen every activity of Oliver's at the academy, and tells him that he should choose his friends more carefully. 
she mocks Katie for being an incompetent person as she couldn't even kill a silkworm, and assumes that she won't be able to survive here. But Oliver makes it clear to Karst that he can choose his friends himself and tells her not to pry into his personal life. He asks what her business is here, and she explains that she is heading to Master Gwyn's workshop. So, she has to leave Oliver's side for a while and asks for his permission to leave. Oliver grants her permission, and before she leaves, he tells her to say hello to Gwyn on his behalf. Oliver then joins his friends at dinner and eats the meal together. Katie tells everyone not to worry for her anymore as she no longer feels sick. Katie then turns to Nanao and notices that she doesn't look that lively. So, she asks Nano if something's bothering her, but Nanao claims to be fine. On the other hand, Pete notices that he doesn't have his book with him, so he realizes that he must have left it accidentally in the spellology class and decides to head there. Oliver and Michella get up immediately to accompany Pete, and Oliver explains to Pete that things that get lost in Kimberly Academy aren't easily found. Michella assumes that a mischievous fairy could be behind Pete losing his book, and that gives her more reason to help him. So, the three of them go back to the class, leaving Guy, Katie, and Nano at the table. Apparently, Kimberly Academy sits on top of a giant labyrinth, which means it basically turns into a dungeon at night. After escorting Pete to the spellology class, the group finds the book lying on the ground, and Pete finally feels relieved. So they start heading back. However, the sun sets, and immediately their path transforms into a mysterious labyrinth. Oliver tells Pete not to worry, as he thinks that the teachers patrolling the school will come to help them. Right at the moment, a voice disguised as one of the teachers calls for Pete, but Oliver warns everyone that this is an obvious trap. So, the mysterious person disguised as the teacher reveals herself to be a fourth-year student named Ophelia. Oliver recognizes her name and tells her that he has heard of her evil research. So, Ophelia gives up her nice act and releases a spell to entice Oliver to come close to her. Oliver repels her spell and runs away with her friends. But Ophelia won't let them go that easily, and with the help of her associate, Cyrus, she blocks their escape path. Cyrus and Ophelia slowly surround Oliver and his friends, which makes Peter's heart skip a beat in fear. Oliver realizes that Pete is scared, so he tries to calm him and promises him that everything will be alright. Pete instinctively tries drawing out his weapon, but Oliver stops him once again as he knows the evil students will definitely go on the offense then. Michella also aggresses, as she also knows trying to defend will only give Ophelia a reason to attack them, so she wants to first see how things play out. Ophelia greets Cyrus as if they haven't met in a long time, and Ophelia reveals that Cyrus actually desecrates the corpses he finds. But Cyrus thinks that what Ophelia does to the men she finds attractive is far more disgusting. He even calls Ophelia a succubus, which makes her angry, and she threatens to hurt him if he teases her again. Cyrus isn't scared of Ophelia's threats, however, as he reveals that the last time the two fought against each other, he ripped out half of her guts. Ophelia draws her dagger as she thinks he has crossed the line, and they both engage in a fight against each other. Cyrus uses a spell to summon a gigantic skeleton monster, and in reply, Ophelia also summons a demon out of her belly button. As Pete begins to wonder what kind of disgusting summoning magic Ophelia is using, Oliver clears up his misunderstanding and explains that this is no magic at all and that she is actually giving birth to this hideous demon. The hideous demon engages in a fight against Cyrus's skeleton monster, which shakes the entire area. So, Oliver realizes that they must quickly run from this place before getting involved themselves. But before they can escape, Cyrus once again blocks their escape path using his bone magic. Thankfully, Nana finds them to save the day before it's too late. The fight between Cyrus and Ophelia looks to be coming to an end as her demon shreds Cyrus's skeleton monster into pieces. But Cyrus instantly reforms the skeleton monster again and commands it to fight against the demon. Nano cuts the bone wall using her katana and steps forward to protect her friends. She tells them to escape, as she believes that once she joins the battle against the succubus and the summoner, things will not turn out well. Ophelia's demon again destroys Cyrus's skeleton monster, so he admits defeat and asks Ophelia what seed she put into her disgusting womb this time to summon such a hideous monster. Ophelia reveals that Cyrus is no better than her, and he actually used real human corpses to make the skeleton monster. Nano realizes that there is no reason for her to let these evil people leave and charges towards the two monsters to kill them first. So Oliver also follows her to help her, but before they can do anything, 
a mysterious student intervenes and uses his fire magic to ignite both of the monsters into flames. The mysterious student named Alvin reveals that Ophelia and Cyrus were actually planning to recruit Oliver and the others to their teams using these antics. So, Alvin has come to put a stop to them and promises Oliver and his friends that he won't let these two evil students harm them, as he also reveals himself to be the student president of Kimberly Magic Academy. Ophelia tries to make a move to escape, but Alvin's friend Carlos restrains her with her sword. As Carlos brings Ophelia to Alvin, Cyrus also surrenders himself, so Alvin tells them that he will give them their punishment once they go back to the depths of the labyrinth. Carlos then lets the two go and explains to Oliver and his friends that Carlos and Ophelia were only trying to recruit them to their teams since they are new students here. Alvin is left impressed that Oliver and his friends managed to avoid being taken away, and explains that, like them, many more students have also gotten lost in the labyrinth but they unfortunately couldn't escape the hold of the evil students. Alvin then shows Oliver and his friends the way out of the labyrinth and leads them back to their worried friends, Guy and Katie. While everyone is finally feeling relieved that all of them are unscathed, Oliver gets furious. He grabs Nano by her collar and asks her if she had a death wish as she recklessly followed them alone to the labyrinth. Moreover, she tried to sacrifice her life by going alone against those two military-level monsters. So, that gives Oliver more reason to be mad at Nano since he cares for her. Michella calms Oliver down and tells them both that they should just talk things out. So, the group heads to their regular hangout place, the fountain, and waits for Nano to answer why she tried to throw away her life back then. Nano explains to them that she has lost her attachment to life long ago, and no longer believes that any of this is actually real. Nano explains that the war she took part in was one of the worst battles she had ever seen. Her country's enemy, the Shumi Yashihisa, led an army of 50,000 men, while her country had only 200 men on their side. Once Nano waged war, she only remembered killing people one after another mindlessly, until she was left all alone in the middle of the enemy camp. Although she was greatly outnumbered, Nano remained determined to sacrifice her life just to get the head of the enemy country's leader, Shuma Yashihisa. She jumped off her horse, dodged all the soldiers, and even killed the commander, who was directly under Shuma. Even after clearing the path, Nano was left surrounded by Shuma's soldiers once again. Shuma commended Nano for being such a formidable opponent at such a young age, so he decided to grant her one last wish before killing her. Nano took this chance to make a wish to fight Shuma's son, Yasutsuna, who apparently was the strongest fighter in his country. Shuma revealed to her that the commander she just slaughtered was none other than his son. Hearing that, Nano couldn't believe how the strongest person could be so weak. While she was left dismayed, Shuma decided to take revenge for his son and promised to give Nano a quick death rather than torturing her since she is a strong warrior. He called all of his soldiers to kill Nano, and everyone rushed at her at once. Nano closed her eyes as if she were accepting her death, but the soldier's spears never reached her skin because of a magical barrier, and a wizard above her riding a broom revealed himself to be the one saving her. The wizard revealed himself to be Western, just like every other student of Kimberly Academy, and explained that he only saved Nano because he thought it would be a waste to let her die since she is a child with immense potential. This young anime Dumbledore then came close to Nano to invite her to come to his country so that she could become a mage. Nano gladly accepted the wizard's invitation and ended up here at the Kimberly Academy. Nano ends her backstory and tells everyone that everything since then has felt like a single, long dream to her, and she only wanted to die to make her wish come true before her dream came to an end. Oliver asks her what wish she is talking about, and Nano tells him that joy could only be found in a blade wielded out of mutual love, and that there is no joy in a blade wielded for revenge. According to Nano, engaging in a fair fight between opponents who respect and accept one another with no enmity between them is called happiness, as that is what she was taught in her country's school. Nano explains that when she fought Oliver in the first class, she felt that happiness and wanted her life to end right then. That is why, when the teacher broke the fight, she approached Oliver right after to go all out against each other. But Oliver rejected her wish back then, as he didn't want to hurt his love interest. Nano also knows that Oliver doesn't have any reason to fight to the death, but she expresses that he didn't have to push her way because of that, as she feels hurt and gets in tears. So, to sum it up, because Oliver hurt Nano's feelings, she stopped caring about everything and wanted to die. Nano even straightforwardly tells Oliver that she has either fallen in love with him or his blade, which to her is the same. Michella acts as if she understands where Nano is coming from, a warrior trying to get killed by their loved one. 
But still, Michella can't let that happen, as Nano is not a warrior anymore but a mage. Michella tells Nano to just be happy with a non-lethal duel against Oliver, but she expresses that she won't be satisfied unless she gets the real thing. So, Michella realizes that Nano needs to change her perspective and find a new way to live. She holds Nano's hand and tells her not to look for a way to die anymore, as Kimberly has too many of those already. Michella assures Nano that this is not a dream and she should spend her precious time with the person she just confessed to being in love with. And more than anything, Michella makes Nano understand that she has her friends here who also want to spend their time with her. As Nano finally begins to understand how precious her life is, Oliver asks her to promise him that she won't ever try to get herself killed, no matter what happens. Nano swears to Oliver that she will never try to take her life away again and apologizes to him for making him worry for her. She asks everyone to teach her how to live her new life here as a mage and explains that she didn't understand any of the classes until now. Even though Nano is not the brightest student, she can become better as she has friends who are ready to help her. They reconcile with each other and end their day in happiness. The next morning at the Kimberly Academy, Nano excitedly runs towards Oliver and the others who have been waiting for her. Before greeting her friends, Nano again apologizes to everyone for worrying them yesterday and promises to become a better person. She expresses that she is now eager to learn the ways of magic, so the group starts heading to class. Nano comes close to Oliver to walk together as she wants to see his face up close. Oliver gets uncomfortable and asks her why she is doing this, so she explains that she is only looking at the person she is in love with. Oliver blushes and tries to move away, so Nano asks him if she made him upset. Oliver explains that it's not like that and that he is just feeling shy, so Nano comes close to him again and again and gets touchy-feely with him. The group then heads to sword arts class, where Leonard explains to the students the six invisible sword techniques known as the spellblades techniques. The students begin to practice their swordsmanship when the annoying side character decides to make an entry to annoy Oliver. Oliver decides to end this by deliberately losing a duel against the egoistic fool to make him look good. But Nana senses that Oliver wants to lose, but she doesn't want to be the girlfriend of a loser, so she tells him to fight with all he has. Oliver takes her words seriously, but before they can start, Leonard stops them right away. Later, Michella tells Oliver that she and Richard grew up together and were constantly compared to each other, and she thinks that it's her fault that he has turned out to be like this. Pete comes there and informs both of them that Katie has run off to save the troll that attacked her in the opening ceremony. Speaking of Katie, she is in the middle of trying to convince the teacher not to kill the troll. But the teacher, Darius, thinks that she is getting out of line and literally uses Crucio on her. Her friends arrive there to save her, so Darius thinks they should get the same punishment. But a senior student named Milligan comes to their rescue and stops Darius from doing anything stupid. Professor Leonard also comes there to object to killing the troll, as the headmistress agreed to that as well. So, Darius walks away from there and Katie finally gets happy as she saves another life yet another day. Did you enjoy this recap? If you did, kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you the recap of the next episodes of this weird anime series. Until next time, stay safe and take care.